Hi, this is Shu with a review of the ASICS Gel Quantum 365, the fifth version of the Gel Quantum 360. They came up with a variety of models uh, following the first Gel 360, the Quantum 360. It was revolutionary because we've never seen a full length gel setting before. In the past, when ASICS had gel, it just had some tiny little droplets of it just for a show uh, to let you know there is some gel in there. Uh, so using this much was incredible and then they went on to produce four more but four of them were very much similar to each other and personally I had a bit of a problem with them with them because they've had a bit of a plastic separating uh, the gel from your foot uh, instead they got rid of it this time and it's just a foam midsole ASICS has a, a variety of foam materials they have so I don't exactly know what this type is but this very soft midsole and then you have the gel so you can actually feel the gel and the foam working in tandem together better than the previous ASICS gel quantum 360s. Um, the size and the design is a lot, a lot better instead of just having one uh, slabs of it it's uh, it's it's more designed strategically and then, yeah like the Nike the new Air Max Nike cushions that you've seen. The tube is around and at the core you just have the foam. And when I first saw that in the A6 gel 360s, I was thinking, so why do you have so much gel? Why don't you put all that gel in the middle? But uh, now I understand there's a reason why. Mm -hmm. And the problem I had with the previous gel 360 is that at the core they had some, uh, this, this plate, right? This sprint plate or this plastic anti-torsion, anti-inversion torsion plate. It actually had it actually made a bit of a circle here on your forefoot and it actually went out there as well so uh, other than the already annoying plastic layer here you have had a, you have another uh, element that makes provides unnecessary rigidity so when you're striking there's a bit of a thud and you can feel this dividing portion digging into your foot a little bit and at the, at the forefoot it was even worse because uh, the foam is a lot thinner and you can actually feel the separate the, the dividing plastic right here at the at the forefoot this particular area where you're mostly putting a lot of weight especially for guys like me who play uh, basketball or tennis and has a lot of lateral movements so that was a definite no no but now they've changed that the only plastic bit is in the middle and a little bit a little bit further until this part so from your forefoot and heel these are all just foams yep so great job they, they do continue the tradition of ASICS um, all these uh, little division here it helps provide added impact protection and uh, shock absorption or shock dispersion and their impact guidance line is also designed to help with the flow of uh, energy or flow of force so it's great uh, ASICS has always done a good job of coming up with good runners uh, overall the the inside of it they this one may look the this, this blue part may look like may look like ortholite but it's not exactly ortholite ASICS always comes up with their own as I mentioned they have a great variety of foam cushionings so if you look at this previous model of GT2170 uh, this is called Solite and it provides a more durable bouncy uh, yet soft ride and it's one of those types they have there and if you look at this model the conventional ASICS runners they usually put uh, a bit of a firm firmer plastic right here so as to prevent uh, under pronation over pronation I think it's under pronation when you're when you have a tendency to step like that they will try to adjust your landing that way so to do that uh, instead of uh, sacrificing sacrificing the aesthetics they've actually can if you look at the gel here it's soft and you can actually form see the waves or wrinkles forming right there yeah and this part one two three this midfoot portion is supposed to provide some arch support and the anti uh, pronation uh, under pronation uh, system so these are harder these gels are harder these are gel but they're much harder than these so nice job of uh, hiding them there but at the same time making sure they work uh, good job with that this version is called the uh, JCQ or the jacquard version so the upper is supposed to be jacquard but personally I can't really tell the difference between uh, the big difference between jacquard and engineered mesh and other textile materials and this is 
some type of a prime knit or a fly knit string that actually forms your foot and stretches at certain parts but are more rigid on certain areas but we don't have that this is just overall a uh, nice little uh, textile material but uh, they seem soft yet resilient so that is good and right nearby this toe box the toe guard you ha can feel uh, another layer of uh, plastic material and it doesn't dig into your foot or hinder your movement in any way but provides uh, a decent amount of protection and support so that is good uh, the tongue it's not that thick it's not that thin it's just regular and it's not crazy well ventilated uh, the heel nice little gel logo here uh, there's adequate foam padding all around but nothing that protrudes or particularly provides extra support or stuff for some cases uh, additional discomfort depending on the size of your foot so this is very neutral it's good and the, the heel cup does a good job of clutching your feet and not digging into it so overall it's a good shoe uh, the weight of it it's slightly heavier than your conventional a6 runners but still a lot lighter to compare compared to all those performance wears with uh, crazy gimmicky cushionings out there for a size 9 it weighs about uh, 320 30 grams so that's fairly lightweight uh, the outsole I personally have played basketball in these uh, 2170s, GT 2170s, for about two years on and off, and these outsoles grip like crazy. Most A6 outsoles grip like crazy, except for a few models. And as you can tell by all these um, chocolate block type of uh, outsole, it actually provides some adequate, decent amount of grip. Um, durability, I can't really say for sure. Uh, compared to models like the XL33, which was just simply rubber that erased after a couple of wears, this is definitely a lot more durable, but slightly less durable than the uh, than the 2170s, which has a, a lot more thicker and deeper grooves. Overall, this is a good shoe. Uh, another thing I want to talk about is that the insole is a very flimsy EVA insole that you would get in almost any type of shoe. So why? Usually ASICs has been the has been the front runner when it comes to developing and continually changing or altering and upgrading their ortholite insoles before any other brand started adopting ortholite as the norm so why did they not continue with this well for one thing the shoe itself even without the insole thanks to the the, the plush midsole and this uh this specially added strobo board or another layer of another layer of foam that a6 has which I don't know the name to and the gel cushioning they provide a very soft ride overall uh, there are no uh, areas that's hot spots that's not providing the kind of uniform type of support or cushioning so it's 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 smooth ride throughout I think you will like it if you uh, were disappointed with the previous gel quantum 360s or the uh, gel quantum infinity which just basically had a, a full-length gel that you could see throughout but uh, as I mentioned here uh, a little bit firmer gel right so the quantum infinity uh, it did not have this type of really soft plush gel it's it was a little bit firmer although it was all around but I think they were thinking about um, uh, stability and durability more so than plush uh, sinking type of cushioning uh, this is a uh, this is quite a Quite a breakthrough for ASICs. I hope they continue to build on this and not take a step back by doing something strange like what they did with the uh, the Quantum 360s initial models.